Total. All right, everybody, we are now live on Facebook. Thank you everybody for bearing with us while we have a little bit of Zoom difficulties. Uh, for those of you just joining us on Facebook, we are live tonight with Paul and Ty from V1 Vodka. Paul, thank you so much for being here tonight. Ty, thank you so much for being here. We also have Mark Roy on the line, our spirits marketing specialist. Him and I are here to answer your questions and, uh, you know, it's double the fun tonight. We have two Pauls on the line. We also have Paul Power. Uh, he works with the V1 team. And, you know, between all of us, we are here to answer all of your questions and answer any concerns you may have. So, uh, Paul, I'm going to let you take it away. Let's get into a little bit of the history of V1 Vodka. Yeah, you know, we keep it fun and moving along, uh, like, at a great pace. So it's great for me to be here. And um, I actually went to high school in New Hampshire. And my family likes to vacation and and uh, there, so we got a lot of ties to New Hampshire. It's great to be selling V1 at the state stores. We have um, been there for about five months and things are going great. But, you know, V1 vodka story uh, is kind of an uh, American dream story, starting something from nothing. Uh, back here in the corner, I'm actually broadcasting to you from Hadley, Massachusetts. This is the headquarters of V1. Our distillery is located in Kami in Poland, which is about 4,000. 271 miles from here to be exact. Uh, but in the corner here, I have my first still. So in 2003, after my Polish grandfather passed away, he left me $6,000 and I used that money to go down in my basement at 27 years old and start playing around with different vodka recipes. And I quickly learned that the thing that sets vodkas apart is the ingredients you use. So um, I love questions. So again, if you think of questions, please write them down or type them in. I'm not sure how it works, but that's my favorite part of the presentation are questions. And so I'm gonna talk about the history of V1, the history of vodka in general. We're gonna uh, make some signature cocktails uh, and then Ty and I are gonna tell our story. And of course, with the Patriot season, and everything that's going on, it's great to have such a New England legend. Um, I still have to pinch myself every time Ty uh, gives me a call and calls me a friend, but um, now we're drinking, buddy. So what is vodka? Uh, I have this, this, this product here. This is uh, a vodka from Hawaii that's made from pineapples. Uh, of course, in Poland, a lot of vodkas uh, are made from potatoes. But really today, there's three or four main ingredients. Uh, of course, your number one seller in New Hampshire is the Tito's, and that's made from corn. Um, but, but really, when it goes back to the history of vodka, really good vodka was always made from wheat. So when I started my journey to craft the world's most drinkable vodka, I looked at wheat to use. Um, I'll just show you guys some basic ingredients. This is your traditional wheat, and you can see by the look of it, look of it um, uh, that it looks it very looks. different from a rye. So rye is what Belvedere is made from. Uh, wheat is uh, used in Grey Goose and Kettle One. And this is actually barley, uh, and you can see how different each one looks. When I, when I was starting D1 again, I was doing it to honor my dad who passed away from pancreatic cancer uh, and uh, my Polish grandfather who was supposedly a moonshiner. So I put the two together. My dad was an entrepreneur with that and the moonshine and my grandfather. So when I set out in my basement, I started making it from a simple sugar, went on to different ingredients, but it wasn't until I went to Poland. Again, I'm Polish, so despite what the Russians say, the best bike is made in Poland. Uh, I found this ingredient. So this is called spelt. It's a 5,000 year old grain. It, uh, you can see spelt is uh, similar to wheat. And see how they look, but you can see there are some differences. And the one main difference, and especially today's environment, is uh, people want things that are better for them. A lot of wheat today has been genetically modified and uh, has a lot of gluten in it. Spelt has almost zero gluten in it. It's been around since Egyptian times. It's more easily digested to your body for your body. And when we distill V1 vodka, uh, it removes all the gluten. So we're certified gluten-free. And uh, of course, a lot of wheat is genetically modified. Spelt being 5,000 years old is uh, not genetically modified. Paul, how did you know? Somebody already asked if you were gluten-free. Right, that's a that's a big, and, and um, I've actually gotten in some, not fist fights, but some arguments with people. Oh, spelt does have gluten in it. 
um, which it does. I think it's about one part per million versus 100 parts per million there and about versus a week. So it has significantly less, but when you distill it and the way we distill it, we remove all the gluten and we've been certified gluten-free since the vodka came out in 2005 and we got it certified in 2007. So I know that's important for a lot of people, but really ingredients matters. So like I showed you the, the vodka made from the pineapple is definitely gonna have a certain flavor and essence to you versus a potato vodka. And again, uh, we have this handy chart. I know everything's backwards, but um, when you're talking about the ingredients, a corn vodka, um, the corn costs about 10 to 15 cents a pound. The, uh, the rye, uh, the ingredients cost 20, 25 cents a pound. Uh, wheat, 30 to 40 cents a pound and spelt $2 a pound. So we use the finest ingredients. Of course, you can buy a watch made of plastic and it tells time or you could have a Rolex made of platinum, right? They both do the same thing, but one has better ingredients and V1 has the highest quality ingredients that you can uh, put into a vodka. So I went to Poland, started working on the recipe, it took me two years and we launched it September of 2005 and literally went down the road, store to store, restaurant to restaurant here in Western Massachusetts. And uh, at the end of the first year, sold a thousand cases and you know, was very happy uh, about people's response to it. In 2010, we entered the biggest tasting in the world at the World Spirit Competition. I uh, have some of our bling here, some of our medals. And uh, we won unanimous double gold. So out of 246 boxes, there were only four that won. But then every judge that tried V1 thought it was the best in the category. So we won the double gold at that. Um, so ingredients, distillation. To turn ahead to 2019, where um, my dream was to own my own distillery in Poland. So for years, we just rented equipment did contract distilling. And uh, in 2018, I decided to raise some money and look for a distillery. And I'm proud to say last year we built this. Uh, this is an existing distillery. It's been around since 1882. We built uh, an addition onto it. So now this is the home of V1 Vodka. We have for the first time ever, we have our own home. And uh, we literally grow our own ingredients. We grow our own spelt there. It's about 25 acres. So we have everything from growing the spelt to harvesting it, to the fermenting, to the distillation, to the bottling, we do um, all in one location. A lot of craft vodkas today are made in the same place by the same company. They just kind of stick their label on it, but that's the unique thing about V1 is that um, not only do we use the finest ingredient, but we own our own distillery and we make everything there. So, um, Move ahead to Ty, and I guess probably most of you are here for him, so uh, and he'll tell you how we met, but um, a mutual friend of ours uh, asked me to create 24 bottles for Ty uh, for his induction to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He was the 323rd person to be inducted last year. So I said, great, he's a New England legend. Of course, growing up watching him with the pick six and three Super Bowl championships. So I made him 24 bottles, and um, this my friend said, would you like to go to his house? He lives in Rhode Island and you could deliver these bottles to him. So I went there and uh, thought it was going to be there for five minutes, end up being there for about eight hours and five minutes. And uh, we got pretty banged up, but it was a great relationship to start because I, we weren't expecting anything from each other. He was appreciative that I made some vodka for him. He said, hey, do you have any other flavors? You have anything else? I went in the car, we ended up uh, spending uh, uh, several hours again just enjoying each other's time and you really fell in love with the product so maybe this is a good time Ty for you to kind of transition and to say about uh, V1 in your introduction start again can you hear me yep now we can hear you all right hey first of all I want to say thank you for being on the phone with us today. Um, we, we really appreciate the time. But yeah, like Paul said, it was nothing that was supposed to be uh, coming into business together. Um, this was from a mutual friend and he made me 24 bottles, custom bottles with all my statistics on it. Uh, and as a congratulatory gift uh, for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So it was supposed to be, what, I think we, I said, I'll be home and we're supposed to be there from like 12 to 12.30, you know what I mean? And, you know, thank you for everything. and. Next thing you know, we sat, we sat there and drank till about eight, nine o'clock. And uh, 
the most awesome part about that is and I know we can't market this guys, but I didn't have a hangover and we definitely drunk enough for both of us to be hang hung over. So, uh, you know, that was a good thing, but you know, from the first sip, you know, I thought it was special. It was the best vodka I ever had because uh, normally I'm a vodka drinker. Uh, and I was like, you got something here, you know what I mean? Just encouraging him. But after I, I heard his story and what he's been through, you know, to get to the point to where he's at, you know, um, I just come off of selling my other company that I had, which you guys, we have it up in New, New Hampshire called Launch, the Indoor Trampoline Parks, which you guys probably know about. But I, um, I sold that and uh, I was like, I want to help tell his story. This is not about Ty Law. I put my money where my mouth is. I bought into the company because this is what I really believe in. So, you know, I don't want anybody to get a misconception of that, you know, Ty Law is the face and he's the spokesperson. No, you know, I'm fully invested uh, into the company as an uh, equity partner. And uh, I think it is absolutely the best vodka in the world, the best vodka I ever had. And the one differentiator that we need to continue to sell and educate people on is the fact that we are the only vodka in the world that uses spelt. And as he was educating you on the spelt brain, I think that is something that we have to continue to do because people are going to ask why, what is it, you know, so on and so forth. So I think um, we have something special. He has the medals and accolades to prove it by winning uh, double gold, you know, in San Fran, which is a big deal. We just won double gold in Poland as well. You know, and there's a competition. So yeah. So Ty, you, know, you uh, blew up my spot a little bit on that. But <laughs> okay. I, 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 hey, okay. I stole your shine on that one. <laughs> you no, know, but since you said it, I'm proud to announce uh, from San Francisco uh, to Warsaw um, last week. Um, we won. Uh, we also won double gold uh, for V1 original and double gold for our new V1 peppermint. Um, so we're literally nine thousand miles apart. Two blind tastings. Uh, they rate us the top five in Poland and. I'll be sending out a press release tomorrow on that, but it's uh, you know just a, a judgment to to uh, the quality of the vodka and that um, we really you know put my heart and soul into it and that uh, to be recognized literally in the birthplace of vodka and I, I'm going to say this in the press release that if you made a sparkling wine and I'm you gonna went, have, I'm going to have a drink to that while we're talking I'm going to have a drink to that right. so, give yeah. me a little bit of mine but All right. and if you were to uh, make a sparkling wine and you went to Champagne France. And uh, the, the, the people, the wine drinkers in Champagne, France, that you were one of the top vodkas and, and it's, it's one of the top sparkling wines. It's quite an achievement and it just goes to the hard work of everybody, all our master distiller, Mr. Ballas in Poland and all the workers there. And, and um, so, yeah, Ty, I, I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, um, of course, Ty is a New England legend, but being uh, for a lo as long time as he played in the NFL, he's able to meet a lot of different celebrities and just speak a little bit about other people that have tried the product that you've taken it to and um, the, the, their reaction to it. Well, I mean, just uh, first of all, I mean, there's nobody that I put this product in front of that they didn't like, you know, I, I didn't even tell people I was involved, you know, so they would tell me what I want to hear. You know what I mean? I said, just try it. And I've had over 30 taste tests and I use uh, Grey Goose, of course, Tito's, Ciroc, Belvedere, Rain, whatever vodka that I had, that I would go try it and I say, this is what people drink, taste this compared to uh, V1. And 100% of the time so far, and I'm not saying that that is gonna always be like that because everyone has different palates, but 100% of the time, guys, they chose V1. And I knew it was special because they, they were thinking exactly what I was thinking. So uh, uh, the people like, you know, whether it's my rap artist uh, uh, friends, you know, uh, Snoop Dogg, uh, Heather B, um, Warren G, you know, if you can see on my uh, Instagram, they all loved it. Um, and my athletic director at the University of uh, Michigan, he was a diehard Tito's. He's like, you're not gonna get me off Tito's. I sent him V1. He's now a V1 drinker, the athletic director uh, uh, for the University of Michigan. But, you know, Brewski, Willie, I mean, anybody that you can think of that had V1, they loved it, you know what I mean? And they're, and they're away from Tito's because once you start educating them, first of all, it goes by the taste, it's the liquid in the bottle. But then you you, you think about, um, okay, why do you like this particular brand? And I, and I give Tito's all the kudos in the world for doing something that he is what everyone wants to be. He took, you know, this vodka, which is a corn vodka, 
you know, nothing unique about it and made it into this conglomerate. You know what I mean? But when I ask people, what is it about Tito's you like? They can't tell me. You know, tell tell me what it is about this vodka. And they can't tell me. But when you talk about V1, they say it's clean. It is uh it's smooth. I mean, it's 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 just enough bite, but not but not too much. So just to hear why people like it is is refreshing to me because you know they can describe it, the taste compared to other vodkas in which is a huge compliment to us so you know um you know i've put it in the hands of a, a lot of people i don't want to sit here and name drop about who um, likes the vodka and who endorses the vodkas from their standpoint because you know a lot of guys got their own uh products you know what i mean i want the the, the vodka which it has speak for itself but as far as my, my reach and my network and to get people that support it, especially being partners uh, now with the Pro Football Hall of Fame, we are, Tito's is no longer the official vodka of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. V1 is the official vodka of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We're gonna be in Gillette when it opens back up. We got the Hard Rock, uh, Allied is distributing uh, in, in uh, New Jersey. So we are distributing in New Jersey as well as Michigan. So uh, we're just trying to bring this to the masses, guys. And uh, I think, you know, once you try it, and if you if you haven't tried it, you know, you would agree that this is the best vodka that you ever tasted. And once you mix it with things, you're having a good time. You're going to get the feeling that you want to feel, but you're going to be able to get up and go to work the next morning because we use the best ingredients in this. And we don't say clean drinking just to say it. It is clean drinking. Yeah, Ty. Um, we got a we got a great game tonight with the Patriots and Jets. Right. Uh, tell them real quick about what happened when because um, you played for the Jets when you sent the the them uh, about. Oh, yeah. So you know, of course, you know, I want to reach out to you know my network. You know, this is what I'm doing now. Uh, we love to support. I want to send you some product, and you know, stadiums have their own you know deals with people. You know what I mean? So I called directly. I played for New York. I don't know if. All of you guys know, but I played for those guys for two years, had a great relationship with them. We just wasn't winning, but that was a part of my journey uh, to get to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So I reached out to them uh, and I sent them some bottles. And I told them the same story I'm telling you about the taste test and everything. So he hit me, you know, back and um, he was like, you know what? I didn't, I didn't want to say anything, but it wasn't even close. He said, this is blowing Tito's out the water because he did his own taste test. And he said, I had to do it just to see because, you know, they get people trying to sell them on things all the time, you know what I mean? And, you know, out, out of respect for me for playing there, okay, well, I'm gonna taste it, but he wasn't gonna, he, he was really honestly telling me he wasn't thinking much of it. And then once he tasted it and he was like, it wasn't even like when he said it wasn't even close that you got, you blowing Tito's out of the water, he said, we're in. And from that commitment, that's how we got distribution in New Jersey. Cause um, you know, like I said, RNDC and with Ally, you know, they picked it up. They said, really? Bam. We're going to be in the suites because they have their own well vodkas. But as far as in the clubs and the suites, you know, they'll be serving V1 as well. And I'll be going there to do an event. the same thing that I'm doing down here in uh, the Hard Rock because I'm in Miami right now. So all the teams that we beat up on, you know, they're supporting V1. So that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, great transition to try. So let's make a couple cocktails. And I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me. Uh, can everyone hear me okay, Ty? Can yep. You hear me all right? Yep. All right, perfect. So we're actually going to make two cocktails today. One's going to be a pomegranate martini, and the second is going to be a winter mojito. So uh, I don't know for for people who've already bought the one. I, I'm I know I made it, but I'm also a fan. But I really love our bottles, so I actually found an online um, kit for fifty bucks. Uh, I love keeping them, so we, we got the nice cut V1 glass here to make the winter mojito. And um, so mojito uh, is mint, simple syrup, lime, and usually rum, but this is the V1 winter one. So we're gonna do it with sage. So we're gonna be using four or five pieces of sage leaf. And we're going to um, get that nice, winter smell. So we're going to rip up four or five pieces of sage. And I'm going to muddle it. I can tell you what I've learned from the coronavirus and being quarantined. That <laughs> like probably many of you, your mixology and your wedding matrix have gotten better because you now unfortunately a lot of places are closed. And again, 
I'll definitely say that half of our business were bars and restaurants. So if you can go support them because they're definitely hurting in the next few months, it's going to be really tough for them. But um, all right, so we got four or five city groups. The other thing I learned from being in quarantine is you can never have too many limes. I'm always going through a lot of limes, so many great drinks. And I can tell you that uh, with the pomegranate martini, and I've done them at, at events for 500 and 1,000 people tastings, if I don't have enough lime, then it doesn't taste the same. Lime is the key to a good Cosmo, a good pomegranate martini, and this winter mojito. So I got a half a lime. Again, having some of these tools like a muddler and the, uh, the squeezer here are really important to make a good cocktail. So we do a half a lime. Five to six sage leaves, like I said, a half wine. Instead of simple syrup, we're going to use some New Hampshire maple syrup. So we're going to use about a half an ounce of maple syrup. And again, both of these cocktails are four ingredients. So you don't need a lot of mixers. You don't need a lot of alcohol. That these are great because they're simple and they're unique and they taste great. So I'm going to take these three ingredients and muddle them. Gonna add the ice. I like to put the ice in before I put D1 in because uh, it actually uh, will melt a little bit and helps it mix. So the D1 vodka, gonna do two ounces of that. I'm gonna stir. You can top that off with a little seltzer if you want. And then garnish with the lime. So V1 winter mojito, sage, lime, maple syrup, and V1. Really simple. Let's try that. It really is a great fall winter drink. You get those flavors from the sage that it's almost like a piney kind of flavor and the maple syrup, a little sweetness again. A lot of people are staying away from things that are really sweet. So you can do a quarter of an ounce of the maple, add more of the vodka again. That's the great thing about mixology and do it to your taste buds. So if you want winter mojito, this is the first one. Next, we're going to oh. do the pomegranate martini. And we have this drink on uh, many cocktail uh, menus throughout Massachusetts. It's soon to be at home. Actually, I had one of the best Cosmos I've ever had in my life in um, Portsmouth at the AC Hotel. There's a new uh, hotel that opened up in Portsmouth with uh, the restaurant there. So if any of you guys want to check that out, I'm not sure. I forgot the name of it, but it was the best Cosmo I ever had. So we're going to do... Um, Two ounces of V1. Two ounces of the palm juice. A little bit of Cointreau. You can use any kind of triple sec. Uh, the LaRue actually makes a, a cheaper product, uh, but makes a really good um, pomegranate martini and not using a lot of it. And again, the key to any good Cosmo is having fresh lime. And I have a half fresh lime here. I'm gonna shake that up. I'm on a double of seven chicken not sure. Come back here to drink this with you. I don't know if anyone out there is drinking B1 right now. It is a Monday, Martini Monday. Paul, that looks so good. Thank you. So two, two simple cocktails. Um, if you guys follow us on Facebook or Instagram, uh, I think we do a great job of posting weekly uh, drink ideas and drink suggestions. It's definitely seasonal things. So we're at V1 Vodka on um, all, all the formats, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. So 
I hope you enjoy those two cocktails when you're able to make them. Um, so I don't know if, the, I don't, if uh, you want to talk or the, uh, if anyone from the state wants to talk about V1 and the pricing and the $5 mail-in rebate, but uh, we have some tremendous pricing on V1 right now. I don't even want to say what the cost is because it blows my mind that we're selling V1 for such a cheap price, but go to the state stores and check it out. We also have a $5 mail-in rebate that's valid for the month. So save even more money, stock up on some bottles to get one of the finest vodkas ever made for a ridiculous price. So I know you guys have some questions, probably mostly for Ty, Ty what, what, how bad the Patriots are, what's up with Cam Newton. But, hey, you, uh, know, you know what we drinking, Paul, right? I, well, I'm drinking. I was just texting back, you know, Tracy, how you doing? Um, I was texting back the flavors, right? And it take me too long because I haven't taken type in since I was in high school, so I was over here doing this shit. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there. Our flavors, because she asked for any infusion, so we're gonna have a good time because we're talking about V1 and we're gonna have we we gonna drink. So we got flavor wise, cucumber is my personal favorite, which is the pick six. Um, you know, it's cucumber, lemonade, splash of seltzer. But if you don't got seltzer, cucumber and lemonade is fantastic. Uh, you know what? It feels like more of a summer drink, but it's not, it's year round for me. So that is the pick six. So when you want to talk about V1, when you talk to me, I'm always going to lean for the cucumber. Paul might have a different idea of what he likes, but I like cucumber, but we have the lime, we have the triple berry, we have vanilla, um, we have hazelnut, peppermint, which is seasonal. And uh, that is amazing. It's getting rave reviews right now. So everyone uh, wants to, you know, jump on this peppermint thing. So I'm just trying to just jump in and we got to liven this party up a little bit. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to put it out there. What else we got, Paul? What else did I say? The, uh, as far uh, as the flavor, did I forget something? No, because uh, right now the flavors aren't avail are available in New Hampshire, but we're working on that, so. Okay, well, we, we got to get it there, guys. The original, that original is original. I mean, it's the best that you ever have. You put it up straight with any vodka, I promise you. You know, your taste buds won't be disappointed. But when you talk about these flavors, because that was a question that was asked, we have plenty of flavors that go along, you know, with the uh, original feel, taste, and, you know, we infuse it naturally. So it's going to be a different experience overall. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, a lot of flavors are artificially done. Cucumber, we use cucumbers right grown right near our distillery in Poland. Take the skin off, cut them up, let them infuse, and, uh, and not, not too long not too short for that perfect uh the balance of the cucumber flavor and you know the thing i always say about v1 when i do tastings when i'm you know i'm, I'm really sad that i can't be in new hampshire and do in-store tastings both ty and i we're going to do those mm -hmm. this year um, obviously in this environment we can't but what i do a lot is cut open the bottle take the cork off and say here smell it mm -hmm. and i didn't make the brand so that it smells great i made it because it tastes great but if something smells that good our cucumber uh you know smells like a field of cucumbers. Our peppermint smells like natural peppermint. Um, and so we use the great ingredients. Again, when you start with spelt, the finest ingredient in the world to make vodka, the most expensive ingredient in the world to make vodka, you're gonna, your result is something that keeps winning double golds. So we love questions. I don't know if there's any Patriots questions for Ty uh, about that, what's going on with Cam or whatever. Yeah, we've got a handful of questions. I, okay. I mean, Ty, I wasn't gonna read this one to you, but because I thought, you know, I wanted to talk about vodka tonight, but somebody okay. has asked, with all the Patriots injuries, do you think Belichick is going to call you to suit up? You know what? <laughs> if you if he really want to lose his job, you call me because I cannot run anymore. So, you know, I wish I was in that position to be able to go out there. I really do because I think they can help, but needs a little help. But Stefan Gilmore, I think he's holding down the 24, you know, uh, you know, legacy pretty well, man. I'm so proud of that guy, man. But I wish I can go back out there and play and, and, and help the team because, you know, I'm, I'm a diehard patriot. You know, I played for a couple of uh, other organizations, but as far as that, that was a pit stop for me. I'm a patriot, you know, till I die. And uh, I just hope that they can turn this thing around. Awesome. Uh, we've got a couple of questions for Mark too. So uh, as we mentioned, we are currently testing the original V1 vodka in our stores. Uh, there are some other flavors. If the test goes well, maybe we'll get those also. But Mark, we've got a couple people asking uh, which stores V1 is available at. They haven't seen it at their stores. 
Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, it's currently in test market, which means it goes out to 36 uh, of our 78 locations. So um, all through the seacoast, all the big highway stores, um, we have test market stores throughout the state. So if you go on our website, uh, nhliquorwineandoutlet.com, uh, you can uh, look up V1 Vodka, and it will give you a whole list of all the stores and what they have for bottles and actual bottles in their stores. And as Paul mentioned earlier, um, you know, the most important part is they're in test right now. They want to be successful here in New Hampshire. We want them to be successful here in New Hampshire. So the retail price is $24.99. Paul may want to plug his ears as I go into the pricing, but uh, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to. It's on sale for $19.99. Plus, he mentioned the $5 rebate. Oh, you let me do that with you too, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, $5 mail-in rebate, you can do up to three bottles on that. So you can technically get $15 back on three bottles. So, I mean, you're getting an incredible vodka for $14.99. And as they've mentioned, um, I've had the opportunity to try it. Uh, I'm a huge vodka fan. Um, I've drank all the brands that Ty had mentioned and, and putting them side by side that the V1 definitely stands uh, head and shoulders above the rest. And for $14.99 right now, you're crazy not to go out and do a little home testing yourself and really prove yourself that it's worth the worth the purchase. And for those, yeah, of you I just, Mark, I almost just had a heart attack, but that's okay. No, we we um, it's very important for us to do well in New Hampshire. New Hampshire, you know, moves a lot of vodka, and uh, we want we want to make a long relationship there. You know, I'm I'm never moving my headquarters from here in Massachusetts and the distiller in Poland, where you know you're right over the border. But again, to attribute to your website. Again, you go to the state of New Hampshire website, it's it's awesome. I send my friends there all the time. It has uh, each store with how many bottles are in it. It's really detailed so that you can say, oh, they only got two bottles left. They got 10 bottles left. And um, so definitely go out and, and try it. And again, that, that price is like uh, basically below my cost. So we'll, we'll see what happens. So get it while, while you can at that because really V1, I always say V1 should be a $30, $35 bottle of vodka every day based on the ingredients we have. And, um, you know, I want to make it a reasonable price. Again, we self-distributed for 14 years, so we we're able to kind of go direct. But now as we grow, we're hopefully going to sell more, make a little less. But I want to get out there to the world. I think the world needs to know the V1 story. I'm starting, you know, the, the little engine that could, you start from nothing. Nothing's handed to you. But if you work hard, you uh, kind of um, follow the golden rule, treat other people well, then um, you hopefully you keep growing. I want to say something before uh, we go to the next subject, but I think, you know, Paul, I, I want to commend you myself for not following what you could have done, you know, started V1 and start dumbing down the ingredients and giving, you know, and just selling the brand that you created by staying true to yourself uh, with the spell. You know, I think that's very important because, you know, once you grow and once you get bigger, it's always, ways to cut corner once you build a, a, a brand. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to say that is awesome that you stuck with your guns. It was, a, and I, I really believe that that's the reason I, that, that I'm here, that I was willing to, uh, you know, take, take that chance and support you and your story because you stuck with what you believe in and uh, stuck with the spilt. And that was, I think that was the best decision that you ever made because, you know, you can use a lot cheaper ingredients, got a lot more margin, got a lot more everything, you know, on your own and in, in creating what you have and, you know, sticking with that, uh, it, it was very important, man. So I think it, it's gonna pay off in the long run. And I wanna say a uh, great job with that. Well, thanks, thanks Legend, I appreciate that. And um, I have this picture here, again, everything's backwards, but uh, oh, one, of our, one of our mutual friends from uh, who played for the Dolphins, Lou, he, he, he posted this today. He says, when you refuse to settle for less than the best, the best will track you down. And I, again, when you're starting a business, you know, my dad was my everything. I wanted to do something to honor him. So my path led me to the best. But I have this picture. It's not, not, not very uh, flattering of me, but there's a picture of me visiting a distillery in Poland where they were making vodka from old cereal. So you can see like Fruit Loops and Wheaties, and you know they didn't care what it was made from. And and you know every bottle of vodka that's sold in the United States have to have the ingredients on it. And if it says made from grain, it could be anything. It could be corn, could be barley, could be rye. Some of the best in vodkas stay on it. Made from this, made from that. We put on there 100% spelt. 
and look it up, do research. You'll find really the good positiveness of the, the grain and what makes it different. So that, thank you, Ty, for saying that. Paul, I, you just had that bottle in your hand. Could you grab that again? Uh, we've got a couple of questions. People wanting to know about the proof. So um, in Poland, again, Poland is like, vodka is like a god in Poland. So it's, it's you have to have a federal definition of uh, the alcohol. So it's 40% alcohol, 80 proof, anything under 37.5 in Poland, it has to be called something else, like a spirit drink. So our definition is a little bit looser here in the United States, but th that was the key. And, and again, I didn't talk about my past life, but I used to be a banker. I worked for TD Bank for seven years before I started making vodka. And one of the things I did when I had the original recipes of V1, I would take it to the bank, let all the bank presidents try it. I was drinking Grey Goose and Belvedere and Kettle and saying, they'd be like, wow, this is smoother. Is there less alcohol in it? No, the key is to have it be 40% or 80 proof and have it taste smoother, more drinkable. And the only way to do that is to use a better ingredient. So Paul, we've got some other questions. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna kind of group them together. So we've got a few people asking, uh, how is Polish vodka different from Russian vodka? How is Polish vodka different from Swedish vodka? So maybe you could just tell us a little bit, you know, elaborate a little bit more about what makes Polish vodka special. I know exactly. you, you, felt, you made but, my day from asking that question. That's it. whoever asked that needs to get like a free Thai law signed bottle because that's a great question. Um, Russian, again, I've done a thousand tastings, in-store tastings in my life. I've probably spoken to 50,000 potential vodka drinkers. And when someone comes up to my table with a Russian accent, almost 100% of the time, they don't like V1. And so the thing about the Russian vodka is they like to have it have more burn to it. And it kind of goes back to maybe their culture or part of um, what happened in Russia and going back to communism is that there was a lot of um, counterfeiting so that the vodka that if it had more burn to it then they were sure that it had enough alcohol in it. so the burn to them said that this was real vodka man's vodka 80 proof uh 40 percent alcohol or 80 proof and if it was smoother or more drinkable then someone was doing something funny with it it was watered down so they like to have that burn to it so when i do these tastings you know, all over New England, and that person with the Russian accent, ah, oh, V1's it's very rare it happens, but ah, oh, V1, I like to have, so my goal was to have a smoother, more drinkable vodka, while obviously not having it be watered down. There's kind of a trend now for low alcohol um, products, and then there's a there's an alcohol out there that calls themselves a vodka, but there's only 20% alcohol in it. By, by definition, it's not vodka. Vodka needs to have 40%, and there's a, a definition to it. So um, that Russian vodka and, 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 and what I created with V1, that's the main difference. Polish vodka traditionally was made from potatoes. Today, most of it's made from grains. Again, po the Polish traditional vodka is a little bit smoother than the Russian vodka. Um, there's 38 million people there about in Poland. There's 380 million people, 350 million people in the United States. In Poland, they drink the same amount of vodka as we drink in the U.S they have 10 times less population. So you go to a uh, convenience store, you go to a gas station, in the back we have cigarettes or scratch tickets behind the cashier. In Poland, they have vodka. And um, so it's part of their culture. They drink 10 times more than we do. I think the same is in Russia. So Russian vodka tend, tends to have more burn. As far as other countries, you know, they're gonna be using the ingredient that they have most of. So like um, um, Sweden, I don't know what they have, they might have, they might grow a lot of wheat. So they're gonna use that because that's what they have. And you have to hand it to um, Tito Beverage who made Tito's. Uh, he's in Texas, he's surrounded by cornfields. So he's like, I'm gonna make my vodka from corn. So historically vodka was made from whatever you had and back a hundred years ago, 150 years ago, everything we grew, we ate. We didn't wanna make alcohol out of it because you didn't have enough money. So what, whatever they had left over, if they had, potatoes for men, uh, you know, in the warehouse that they weren't using. Okay, they were making some kind of crude vodka from that. Or pears in France or grapes. So typically each country that has uh, whatever ingredient, whatever they're known for, they can make vodka from that. And I think you guys had, I saw on your shelf, you know, there's a, a Vermont vodka that was making it from maple syrup. In Poland, that would not be called a vodka because there's a certain definition, but 
they have a lot of maple syrup in Vermont, so they distilled that from that. You can distill from any organic ingredient. And so the, the like I showed you in the beginning, here in Hawaii, you have lots of pineapples, you make vodka from that. Cool. All right, I've got a couple of questions for Ty. Mm -hmm. uh, who's your pick for tonight's game? Oh, you know what? I'm not going to say this because I'm a patriot, but we got this. I mean, the Jet, <laughs> come on, man. We go, I mean, yeah, we don't have to have our best team out there. They lose to just something seriously, seriously, seriously wrong. Uh, if we were playing somebody else, I'm not going to pick the page just because that's my team. So I, I feel good about this one. I'm not saying go out there and bet. I don't condone that. But Patriots got this all day. Because Jets, I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the worst. This is one of the worst teams I've ever seen. <laughs> Patriots better than them. And then, Ty, somebody would like to know, what would you consider to be your signature drink? Uh, it's the pick six, like I was explaining earlier. Um Cucumber, lemonade, we, I mean, whatever lemonade you prefer, we're working on something, I can't say that right now, because we don't want to spill the beans, but we're working on a partnership with a lemonade, but cucumber and lemonade, splash of seltzer, if you got seltzer, it's awesome, you don't need the seltzer, but that is, that is, that's my drink, because it's light, it's refreshing, I think, you know, I can drink it year round, and I can sip on it all day, and feel good, and don't be hungover. <laughs> Then we've got another one from Mark here. Uh, Mark, do you have a timeline for fans to follow for estimated statewide distribution of V1 vodka? Do we have a timeline? For statewide distribution. Yep, so our test period uh, for our liquor stores is a six month test period. So basically they have to do a certain amount of sales within that six month period. Uh, if they do it at any point, we'll go full distribution. Uh, if it takes the full six month, then we review it at that point, and then we uh, expand and contract uh, our distribution based off their sales numbers. Right now, uh, they're trending pretty well. I would hope uh, after seeing Paul's presentation and, and seeing Ty's passion behind the brand and with the brand that you guys will be going out to our store tomorrow and picking up a few bottles to help push them over the edge for some uh, full distribution. Excellent. And we've got some other questions about how do people access the mail-in rebate? So for those of you who registered for tonight's event through Eventbrite, uh, you were emailed a copy of the rebate. We'll send it again tomorrow morning. And then for those of you who are watching on Facebook, uh, we will also leave a link to the mail-in rebate in the comments section of the live feed. So that way everybody who tuned in will have access to it. So that uh, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that it is $5 off a bottle and it's for up to three bottles, right? Yep. And they could always email sales at V1 Vodka. So sales at the letter V, the number one, V-O-D-K-A. And if they send us that, we could uh, uh, email us that. We could send them that. Well, somebody way. on the chat said they want to see Tupac, my talkative bird. There he is. Hey, Tupac. Oh. You won't say nothing now. We in his face. And, hey, don't find me. He curses bad, like my mom. So don't, <laughs> don't mind me. He, he will say some woo, like Belichick when he when he mad at you. Yeah, the Tupac got that potential. Best Tupac guys. Say hey, hey Ty, I got, I got a quick question for you. Yeah. Who is, who who is more uh, the reason for the success? Is it Brady or Belichick? You know, I, I, I would never pick one over the other. Uh, I think it goes hand in hand. I mean, their legacy is kind of intertwined no matter what's going on right now because before last night's game, everyone talking about Tom, 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 but then after that, last night's game, everybody like, oh, it's Belichick, Belichick. So, you know what? I mean, I think it's just uh, something to talk about, barbershop talk, a debate, but at the end of the day, you know, no matter what, neither one of them can run from me the other one so you know they're always going to be intertwined so i i, I can't I, I think they were equally as important uh but as a business owner um you can you can coach longer than you can play but when you sit there talking about okay if you got to make a decision if i got to fire one of them damn it you got to fire the player <laughs> you know what i mean it's like hey you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, the coach, he puts he puts the pieces together. You know, he can put, he, you can invest in somebody that can coach for 10, 12 more years. You know what I mean? At this point, you know, you, you know, as great as time is, you can't play for 10, 12 more years. So, you know, a lot of people, 
you know, you know, tend to ask that question. If you got to get rid of, rid of one, you got to put your CEO hat on and say, okay, this one has more longevity, no matter what has been accomplished, because neither one of them won a Super Bowl, you know, outside the other one. But th this guy, if I pay him, I can pay him for another 10 years. Do we really think as great as he is in the GOAT, do we really think Tom Brady can play 10 more years of uh, football? Not even, not just at that level, just at football, period. He's already, you know, uh, you know, beating the hands of time as far as average, you know, but Belichick, he's here to stay. So if anybody going to go at any time, it will, it will, it will be Tom. Uh, so we've got a few comments on Facebook from Angela. So Angela wants everybody to know that she loves View on Vodka. And she also wants to know if Tupac can say Tom Brady. <laughs> no, but he can. Like I said, he can swear. Like he, he talks when he wants to talk. You know what I mean? And, and the reason that we got him, uh, it was like when I first got drafted, I had this bird since uh, 1995, my rookie year. <laughs> So my mom just brought him down because she comes down to, to visit and, and she stays down here when it gets cold up north, but she always bring Tupac and we were walking and he was like seven, seven, eight weeks old. And my mom walked past the pet shop. We was down at the Emerald Square Mall and he was like, hey, baby. So my mom was like, what? Who, who was that? And it was the bird. And he, when you walk past, that was just where I saw he knew it was, hey, baby, hey, baby. So we got back to the house. And my mom was like, let's go get that damn bird. I'm like, what? Why? He was like, don't know. I don't ever walk past nobody and they call me baby. <laughs> so, so that's how this whole, and that's what we used to, we went back to the mall right before it closed at like nine o'clock. We got there at like 8.45 and we went and picked up the bird since 1995. And he's been in the family, uh, you know, ever since. So everything else that he picks up on is kind of like after my mom and, you know, not the type of language that you always want to hear because <laughs> he'll just blurt it out anywhere, you know? <laughs> well, that, you know, it's fine. We're all over right. 21 years old. We can hear a few swear words if we need okay. to. Okay. Well, if, if it comes, it's not from anybody else but Tupac. If, if swear words come out of left field during our conversation. <laughs> Although, Ty, you've been known on uh, some sports radio, drop a few. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got it honest, though. I got it from Mama Law out there, you know? <laughs> But I try, I try to curve it like, if you think of me, she's times 10. I mean, it's not even close. <laughs> so Paul, we have somebody who wasn't on at the beginning of the presentation on Facebook and they were wondering if you could quickly walk us through your first cocktail again, because they missed it. Oh, sure. So it's a, um, you know what's gonna have to happen? I'm gonna have to drink the whole thing to make it move. Let's you see poured how here. All right, it's a winter mojito. So it has four ingredients. Have some fresh sage, four or five uh, pieces of sage. I'm gonna rip them up and then I'm also going to muddle them. You've got a half a lime, lime juice, Again, at the grocery store, you can get some of those squeeze bottle lime uh, things. Never buy those, never make a cocktail with those. It's, it's not, not gonna be close. I always use a fresh lime. Like I said before, in COVID, my house, we keep running out of limes from all the uh, drinks we're making. So always have enough of lime on hand. You're gonna do about a quarter to a half an ounce of New Hampshire maple syrup. You have three ingredients, sage, half a lime, Maple syrup. Uh, add some ice. And then two ounces of B1. I usually have another glass where I kind of go back and forth and stir it. But I'm gonna stir it with the knife here. Just to get a little sparkle in it, put a little carbonated water. And that's it, four ingredients, the V1 winter mojito. I am so glad somebody asked about that because that is just like a great drink for this time of year. The sage, you know, sage is like 
the number one spice that gets sold at Thanksgiving time. So this would be a great drink to have at your Thanksgiving. You can easily make it a little bit lower alcohol, put a little bit extra seltzer. You could make a mocktail out of it. I mean, we don't, we don't want to omit, omit the V1 vodka, but just saying, if somebody in your party is interested in a mocktail, this would be a great one. Oh, all right. So guys, we've got so many comments just from people saying that they love V1. Uh, Ty, you're the best patriot <laughs> and variations of that. So lots of great feedback from everybody on the line tonight. So uh, just you know, to kind of conclude, like it's been great. It's been a great tasting. We've loved hearing about the history of the brand. Uh, for anybody who might be just joining us uh, that is playing along with our passport program, tonight's code word is Patriots. So go ahead and enter that into your app so you can be entered to win uh, the $2,500 gift card to our stores for the ultimate home bar. So you can make your own ultimate home bar. Um, you know, I think just to kind of close things out, I, I would love it for Mark and Ty and Paul to all tell us like, what's one product that you would consider a must have on a home bar? Who's, who's that question towards? To all of you guys, what would be your, you know, must have at your own home bar? Well, my, my must have, like I said, you know, I probably drink more of the cucumber than anybody. So I, I must have at all times is a uh, cucumber. Paul, I'm down in Florida. I ran out. So we need to get, I need to get a couple of cases down here. But um, must have is cucumber for me. And always original. Original is, you know, that goes, you know, for everything. Um, so, you know, you can always count on the original to make your favorite, you know, vodka drink. But, you know, when it comes to the flavors, you know, I'm, I'm a cucumber fan. You know, I, a lot of my friends there, they love the triple berry. I love the vanilla. You know, everybody got different palate when it comes to that. But when it comes to pure, clean drinking vodka, V1 is, you know, stands a uh, Budrat original. And it looks good too. The bottle is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Paul even turned his into some glasses. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I, I mean, I would I would say actually, um, my least selling V1 is V1 hazelnut, but um, I actually kind of invented it on my honeymoon with my wife Cassie in Poland when I tried another hazelnut vodka, um, and kind of well, re fell in love with her and fell in love with the vodka, um, so that would be definitely something that I would always have, and then the original. But also, like I said in the beginning, the two things that are really important for the home bar would be one of these citrus squeezers and um, and a muddler. So between the muddler, muddler and the citrus squeezer, you can do a lot, a lot of great cocktails in your house. Oh, you know, I, I do want to say uh, something, uh, Caroline, uh, just answer a question, because that was awesome. Um, who was it? Let me see. Were, were we ever thinking about making a, a pre uh, pre-mixed drink you know that's something that we guys i know i know we uh, should but i just want to answer the question there is we have been approached that is something like from a pick six standpoint we're thinking about so i just wanted to answer the question not there yet but right now it's about you know v1 and what we're doing but that is something that we are definitely considering at some point i just want to answer the question you got to you got to communicate, Paul. You don't give it up, but you got to communicate. <laughs> hey, hey, you're the Hall of Fame. The banter with me and Paul, guys, it's all day. We 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 talk like we brothers that we've known each other, you know, from from birth. So you know, it's a lot of trash talking that goes on between me and Paul. Yep. <laughs> and you 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 always win because you have those three Super Bowl rings. I just have this little wedding <laughs> ring, so. Oh uh, yeah, right. Just show the medals. Uh, you you got more medals with V one, and I got Super Bowl ring. <laughs> well, I'd just love to add for the home bar. Like when you are building your perfect home bar, of course the spirits all make a big difference. Some wines are great, but you know Paul made that pomegranate Cosmo earlier, and you know what went in that Cointro. and that is you know it's a great addition to a handful of cocktails. 
I love using it for cooking too. So I'm just going to put that out there as my recommendation to make sure you have it at your own home bar. So for whoever wins, make sure you grab a bottle. Uh, so thank you everybody so much for joining us tonight. We had such a great time. Uh, I mean, I am very thirsty for a pomegranate Cosmo right now. I might go down and make one now uh, to go with my dinner. So uh, thank you to Paul. Thank you to Ty Law. Thank you to Mark for joining us. We hope you'll go uh, into our stores, pick up a bottle. The V1 is still in test. So, you know, if you want to see those additional flavors, you better help it get through its test phase. So uh, thank you again for joining. I'll make sure everybody has access to the mail-in rebate. And don't forget, V1 is on sale right now for Block Your Ears, guys. 1999. Right. Wow. Yeah, right. I just I just want to say one last thing to Mark. You know, uh, people may or may not know that the state of New Hampshire is one of the biggest uh, liquor buyers in the country, in the world. So it's, you know, an honor for me to be in here. And hopefully we'll make the test. But um, thank you for giving us a shot. And uh, we're, we won't let you down. And cheers in Nostrovia. Cheers. cheers. Mark. And when it's time. I'll be, I'll be more than happy to come up. You know, you can always count on me, you know, to make the in-store visits and you know, uh, buy, you know, the, uh, you know, accounts and things like that, man. Cause I mean, yeah, here, here's, here's a Thai sign bottle. We're, we're going to be, um, once this virus is done, we can do uh, bottle signings, the in-store tastings. Mm -hmm. Here, here's an example, this bottle worth a lot of money, right Ty? <laughs> but it's all about fun in-store visits to me. This is fun. So, you know, when you're around me, we gotta we gotta have fun. You know, ain't no ain't no stiffness around here. We gotta go out and have a good time. We're gonna enjoy each other, and that's how it is. So you'll get to know my personality then. But I think it's pretty known. But damn it, when I come in the store, we are gonna have a good time. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna hold so you to that, Ty. We're gonna hold you to that. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll be there. Yeah, save the date. Uh, save the whole month of November next year for distillery. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. We Take appreciate everybody time. watching. Don't forget to go and download your mail-in rebates and pick up V1 Vodka at uh, the New Hampshire Liquor and Wine Outlet nearest you. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.